two, one, blast off. <laughs> Alright, I think everything should be live right now. We'll have to wait for a hyphen. I saw a hyphen was pumped in the chat already. Uh, already ready to see what happens. Alrighty. Hello, hello, hello. My name is Stephen Hagen. I'm Mark Gatorberg. And we are here with the newly rebranded St. Lotus MTG. That's right. It's really nice to actually have that all done and back to a, something that makes some amount of sense. Yeah. I mean, you know, for the five people that know what a BRD is, you know, <laughs> I mean, we still have to describe what BRD is, but St. Lotus allows us to have a, a nice area for growth and other potential and, you know. Yeah, it means that we can start doing those cube drafts yeah. without it being completely weird. Exactly. So it's not just all about the BRD all the time. So we are here today. Uh, I'm assuming we're live at this point. Uh, yeah, we are. Yeah, yeah, I just checked it. Great, great, great. Uh, we're here today for our recap show. So at the beginning of the month, uh, mm -hmm. the 1st of February, right? Or was it the 2nd? Uh, it was February 1st. For February yes. 1, the first, so Saturday, first Saturday in this month, we had our draft number four? Five. 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 Yep, that's right. We had draft number five. Um, and the story of the draft was obviously kind of the gunning for Elaine. <laughs> so She really appreciated that the entire time. Yeah, I'm she sure. She didn't get upset. Yeah. No, not at all. Never. Um, never. Um, so yeah, so uh, Elaine has obviously been, uh, even when not winning outright, has been, since the very beginning, uh, a powerful force. Uh, Elaine's a smart drafter, a very good player, and has a, a niche and, you know, kind of sticks to it. Uh, but, but, you know, it can take a couple different ways on it, and she did that this time, right? Mm -hmm. She went back towards Grixis. Um, and, and we're going to talk a little about that, that, that choice and what that choice meant. But we brought in a lot of the uh, kind of people to gun for her, right? Like yeah. we we had the luck of bringing back several former champions. We had Dan Zelensky, um, who is a champion from number two. We had Naveen, who is champion from number one, um, and then we had Brandon Curry, who had uh, been the runner up several times as well, right? And then also brought in a couple other local kind of guns, very good players, Kyle Vance. Mm -hmm. And uh, John Ryan, um, as well, to kind of you know level this out here and um, kind of put forward what, what you know what we kind of thought was what our best field yet in a lot of ways. I, I think it's indisputably our best field yet. We right. really had a ton of talent come in here. These are people who not only are in the most cases pretty deep on what vintage road history draft is, but these are also people who are just like really talented drafters and magic players in general. Right? These are people that are playing. Uh, on every SCG they go to, uh, they're, they're going, I mean, I, I know John Ryan's been on the Pro Tour, I believe, at some right. point. I don't think he's on it right now, but if the Pro Tour even exists anymore, I'm, right. not, sure I'm not sure what the current state is. is. But yeah, no, they, these are these are not the the usual rabble that we, we have to, when you and I were playing. <laughs> right, so. yeah. No no insult to our usual rabble, right? Uh, myself <laughs> included. I, I'm included in that usual rabble. Yes. Uh, so yeah, so so we, we definitely brought that in, and we had implemented a couple new things. I think one of the things that was important is we were trying to get a stable field. Right. We've had a lot of issues of uh, like last minute callouts. It's understandable, um, you know, it's all, it's an all day affair. Um, so we only ended up with one kind of last minute call out because there was and that was last minute as in three weeks prior. Yeah, right. That's not last uh, minute at all. There was a time. scheduling issue. Uh, we'd done a lot of these on Sunday, and so the issue was that we were doing it on Saturday. Yeah. Um, so that brought in Vince Brown back. Um, now Vince obviously did not have the best showing, as you can see on the screen right now. Vince <laughs> was zero and seven. Um, that was rough for him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so one of those real stories of this draft, I think, in a lot of ways, is I think that the struggles that Vince had and uh, Shelly had. So their lower rankings, for whatever various reasons, uh, really allowed the top end to kind of complete, right? To kind of shrink. Yep. There was a lot of wins um, that kind of normally they would have, and that gave a lot of people extra wins. So that came like a really tight field at the top. Exactly. Uh, the other big story before we kind of break down um, individual drafts here is this kind of looming question at this point, right? We've talked a lot about, like, um, can mono red be a thing? Uh, can burn exist? Is, is it good? Is it good enough? Well, I mean, at this point, I think one of the questions is, is there anything that can really take down control slash combo control, right? 
when we look at John Ryan's list and when we look at Daniel's list, right, they, these are just control lists. They have a combo finish. You know, they're going to finish in one bell swoop. That's something that Elaine's didn't have. Elaine's was very traditional control. She wasn't doing anything outright. But what they were doing was controlling the board and then just comboing out. There, you know, I wouldn't call very few of these lists dedicated combo. I guess the closest to a kind of dedicated combo was Naveen's. Yeah, I mean, I think it's hard to not have a combo list, it, have a combo some winner list, right? It's just, it's really difficult to play a super grindy deck, right? The one the one that I played in VRD1, I think it was, right. was like that mono black, well, it was a black green list, kind of just like a traditional rock deck. Mm. Um, like, I think that's about the closest you can get where you're just constantly stripping your opponent's hand. But yeah. Even in that, you have people top deck on you and you lose. Yeah, so, and, and I think Dead Guy Ale is a, that same order that I've talked about, right? That yeah. I think... I you know I think may even be better because you get some of the pri- than the black green because you get some of the prison elements to go with it, right? Um, and you have persistent threats that right. sit out there continually threatening things like Thalia things like that, right? Uh, so it looks like ninth seed isn't going to be joining us tonight. Uh, probably a little frustrated about its loss again, um, but luckily we have Hype in here hanging out with us. Um, yeah, I believe it was the players tour. So I'm going to stop paying attention to trying to get this bot set up right now, and we're just going to run with it. Absolutely. So t- to your point though, right? You're you're kind of base staple question is, is it possible for a non-control deck to win? So you're talking right. about, I, let, let's break down really what you mean there. You right. mean an aggro deck? Right. Uh, which we've never seen in our VRD, but we've seen we've seen things like uh, Zoo exist in the past. We've seen Burn exist in the past, and they always have kind of middling finishes. Right. Ramp. Um, yep. Ramp, Ramp has definitely done well. So right. I think I mean, Ramp's done okay. Elves have done well. Right. So I mean, so, so non, non-control, right? right? So what I'm talking about is talking about an aggro deck. Uh-huh. A ramp deck, sure. Um, which we've had some close to right here, at least. I think elves have done well in the bigger picture of all VRDs, correct? But not as necessarily well here. Um, you know, Kyle had elements, but in, in some ways, Kyle ended up being uh, almost combo because you know he was had some interesting side kills, right? Um, and then pure combo, right? Where you don't, you're not you're not playing any counter spells, you're doing your own thing, you know, storm. kind of like storm, yes. right? Right. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, and I think maybe if we look at the history of VRDs, right, that these things might have once been good enough, but like with the onset of the availability of Narset and Teferi Time Raveler and pieces like that, right, it's like, are the control pieces just so strong at this point that the others can, can keep up with those kind of utter shenanigans, right? So I don't think so. It's a short answer. I think we've never had anyone that is an experienced VRD player dive in and try to try to go for that combo finish. You don't think you don't think combo can keep up, or you don't think combo is dead. I don't think combo is dead. I think combo is very much alive. Just nobody's been willing to pull the trigger on it. Um, When you have so many two card combos, it's easy to slot combos into the control decks, as we see happen all the time. Right. It's way harder to actually find dedicated combo decks. The ones that have happened are kind of like your deck that you ran before with that Karn Karn deck that just ran all the artifact combos. Um, We've also seen Naveen pull that in, the I believe, the first or second one, Mm -hmm. where he... And and these are all, like, first or second place decks. So I think that dedicated combo exists. Okay. But even in those dedicated combo decks, you're probably still going to run manager in if you get it. Right, right, right. And I guess, I mean, combo often often has a control element, right? I mean, I think Brandon is probably the one who's tried most dedicated combo, but his combos are often so many. uh, And obviously, like, Brandon whiffed big this time. Right. Uh, I mean, as opposed, this deck was still very much, and we can start with his for our analysis, right? Like, sure. this deck was still very much in Brandon's wheelhouse. These were, <sighs> good question, hyphenated. I'll, I'll come back to that in a second. That's, uh, where does that go, right? I think yes. I, I, think, I think it has to. <laughs> I think that, and that's probably the ultimate answer is the artifact deck is the most pure combo deck. Sure. Point. I mean, and by, let's clarify what you mean by artifact deck. You, we can refer to be either like a mud deck, kind of like the, the one that Cody did last time. Um, and I don't, I mean, we didn't have anybody dive super deep into it this time. Jeff Lydon's, uh, yeah, the Bomberman. Mystic, yeah, that, Mystic that one for sure Bomberman. is a combo deck. Yeah. Um, but like, I feel like there's a, there's a mud kind of stacks type deck. There's a mud aggro deck. And then there's like some Urza concoction and then there's the artifact combo decks. Um, so I think that there's like, uh, yes, <laughs> any deck is going to play workshop. I think, I think workshop is at this point. We thought it was dead for a long time, and I think it's actually proven out that in the right deck it can be useful. Yeah. It just requires you to be running Mystic Forge. Like, yeah. it requires some some crazy stuff. I think it's better than Academy in this format. Yeah, I, I feel like Workshop isn't dead 
uh, stacks is dead. And that's actually the real thing, is that you can't run mud stacks. There just aren't enough lock pieces. Right, and there's just too many... It's just too easy to hate out. I mean, right. that's the big risk of the artifact deck is I think it often ends up right on the cusp. It often ends up in that kind of 3-4 spot yep. because it's just so easy to hate. Yep, I think um, that's right. So, okay, yeah, let's dig into Brandon, just like you were saying. So, Brandon, uh, we can see, let's see how deep. 17 picks-ish? Okay. Right. We'll make sure we can see roughly where on our screen. So, we're down to a bar right there. So, I mean, I think Brandon ends up in a place that he's been the last couple times, right? He's got fast band shenanigans. He's got a lot of little different combos uh-huh. in. Um, now, he fully admitted um, a mistake around Misty Rainforest. Uh, oh, I think interesting. He didn't like his pick of Misty there, and I don't remember what he said it should have been. Uh, but, you know, if you went back to the coverage, it was there. Yeah. I mean, he did he start the run on the fetches thing? He yeah. tried to, and it didn't actually take off. Right, I mean, he didn't really take off. He tried to. Yeah. Uh, but like he said, there was something there that 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 top pick where it's at. That's like a, I don't know. That. There's a lot of like strange. The ordering is weird here, right. right? Like all these cards are totally playable. It's just weird to be taking things like Nissa who shakes the world ahead of Crucible mm-hmm. and ahead of Trop. Like right, th- these are odd decisions, and it's not. I, no, I'm not even wrong. Maybe he was scared that Kyle was going to grab it from the the green seat. But I don't know. There's just a lot of there's a lot of stuff here where it seems like he kind of. Play to his usual strength, which is start with a land combo deck and right. then see what else is open. Um, and his deck wasn't terrible. No, it no. kind of just like ended up in this. The paradox well, I think was great. Um, they didn't play it. Yeah, right. It wasn't in his main. deck. He was going for a stasis deck. Was the thing that he said. Right in the oh, end, he said sure. he really was wanting to play a stasis deck the whole time. Sure. And I can't remember what it was that he was going to pick. Or that he felt he should have picked right around the misty. But like, what he ultimately wanted to do was lock people out with stasis and have kind of this wilderness wreck stasis unfair uh, situation. Sure, yeah. yeah. I mean, that, that is a two-card combo that we've never seen in this format before. Right. It, it is, like, it's a four-mana card and a two-mana card, though. Yeah. It's hard. Uh, I mean, he was able, I know, he got a couple wins with stasis, right? Yeah. Uh, it, it, I think one of the things that worked, the thing that I was most interested with was watching his Tangle Wire, like, work, right? Like, particularly uh, the Tangle Wire with Emery, where you could rebuy it. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, his Tangle Wire did a whole lot of work. Um, and, or, like, the ability just to turn it into an, uh, an Elk with Oko when, it, when it's getting ready to run out, right? Like, there was some really interesting plays with Tangle Wire. He definitely had a couple games where, like, he came back out of nowhere, you know, with just the fast bond shenanigans, which was like, oh, I've got fast bond, yeah. uh, I've got fast bond top and uh, Courser of Crucifix, and I'm going to do basically whatever I want at this point, you know. Yeah, his deck had so much power, um, but it felt like it felt like fast bond and a lot of the more fair cards mm-hmm. it's weird to call fast bond fair but it feels like fast bond and kind of like a lot of these like crucible and, and things like that didn't end up playing as nicely together as i hoped they would right yeah. like strip mine fast bond and crucible are fantastic if you get them out together but there's not a lot of ways that he had to kind of find the pieces that he was missing yeah i think he was definitely feeling like i, I maybe he should have played the wheel i think he was kind of missing some draw um, yeah, as opposed to some of his other decks. It, it just felt clunkier. Right? Yeah, it, it felt like there were a couple decks here, with, and rather than diving into one of them, he kind of grabbed everything and hoped to get lucky, and it right. didn't work out this time. Um, th- but yeah, I think Emery, which you mentioned, I think is this is the story of Emery being the best deck it's ever been in. Yeah, like, well, we've had it in two decks, and the last time it was um, really only to buy back Crucible. Right? That's what I'm and saying. It was it's, kind of a bad pick. This is the first time Emery... Emery is like performed and was the integral part of the deck. Yeah, the, the foundation of this deck. Him buying back um, Ballista was massive in several games. Right, yeah. like you just build to use Ballista and then play Ballista again over and over and over again. Yeah. Oh, fair. Yeah, going six zero with artifacts. I feel like what number one indicates that people aren't picking hate cards high enough. Um, and I know that was one of the big takeaways from the last PDX to do a slight segue away from the right. St. Louis one. Pacific does a really awesome vintage rotisserie as well. They do it asynchronously. It's a little different. They don't stream it. Um, but th- their drafts are always really interesting just to look at from a theory crafting perspective. And the, the part about asynchronous I want to chime in. That what makes that really interesting, of course, is that you get time to think about your picks. Right? Yes. Like, 
our people out here, like, you know, Elaine's taking her sweet time as always, and I'm out there yelling, <laughs> like, hey, y'all, we're an hour behind schedule, uh-huh. right? Like, we're, like the pizza's almost here, and you all are unpacked, too, essentially. Like, we need to pick this up. We're going to lose viewers. Um, <laughs> so you don't have a lot of time to think sometimes, yeah. like, you know. Uh, but with that asynchronicity, you have that ability, like, okay, cool. Well, this is what this person is doing. Hmm, maybe I should try this, and you can research and think about picks. That makes it very different, but also super nuanced and interesting. Yes, I, I think I think they're both very interesting. The one thing I want to take away for next time um, is to have seats drafted ahead of time. I think that might actually add to people's decisions and what decks to prep for. Right, no, right that makes now sense. you have to prep wide open, and if you knew two nights before what seat you were in, it yeah. help a lot. Um, so I, I feel like there's a lot to learn from kind of what they've been doing out there. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, no. So so I think this is the first time Emery was the cornerstone of a deck and really could perform it in every level of this. Yeah, no, I so. agree. Yeah, <laughs> goldfish in a half built deck. That's really interesting. I hadn't thought about that. Mm, yeah. Tennessee, are you missing cards? Right. What? What? No. Oh, I'm well. Like in my first in BRD two when I had Urza in the main deck and I ended up being garbage. So I got against right. a goldfish a half built deck for a little bit. You know, like thirty picks in, I'm like, oh, this Urza is not what I want to be doing. I'm not going to run this. I'm going to run this other card that that, that does more. Absolutely. Uh, and one one other thing before we jump off of Brandon's deck, if we look down here at, at the uh, at the actual standings that are down there, the challenge standings, mm-hmm. uh, it says Elaine won this thing. Let's be very clear, Elaine did not take down the victory. She no. she lost heartily to John Ryan right. in the finals. They opted to play the full match in the finals, uh, the best, best of one. sports, and yeah, it was just fantastic. Um, yeah. But yeah, we got to see John Ryan end up winning that thing in a pretty momentous way. All right, so let's bounce over to uh, let's go ahead and bounce over to Vincent. Sure. Yeah, he had a he had a rough time this one. You know, I mean, I think Vincent has a lot of great ideas very often, but I I, I think sometimes eh, he gets just a little torn, and I, I think he's trying to do a, cu- a couple things here. Um, you know, this is very similar in some ways to the deck from BRD four that went was like half Reanimator and half Storm that ended up kind of being ten fins. Yeah, right? you're right. Um, and I thought he was kind of doing that for a little bit, and I poked fun at him a, a little bit at it at one point, and then he was like, yeah, I kind of got that feeling too. So he was trying some really interesting storm shenanigans, um, and, and what he was really going for, but I think it's just too risky in the end because it just costs too much mana, was this, uh, where is the old boy even at? Uh, is it Kroxa? No, he ended up playing Kroxa quite a bit. Actually, Kroxa is one of the better things he had. It was this. I'd never even heard of the spell. Uh, it must be up a little bit. He drafted it. No, there it is. Indomitable Creativity. Yeah, this card's bad. Yeah, this. I, I think this strategy was... It's cute, right? So Indomitable Creativity... Yeah, it's just bad. It's cute. That's a, <laughs> uh, uh, the thing that's interesting, you could destroy theirs too. So you could basically make them polymorph, an artifact or a creature. That's or thing, Or you can make yourself. But it's still... So he was planning on making... The, having these little artifacts, mocks that he could get rid of, but then also... His little to- couple tokens from his goblin spells, and then hopefully indomitable creativity into his bigger stuff. Right? I saw him hail mary with indomitable creativity and hit um, like something that was just utterly mediocre. I don't even know what creature it was. It was just like, oops, right? That's uh, you know, that's not good. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It, it's one of those things where like, if you're I, look, I'm Dragon being Potter, I, I'm being very judicious about my words here, right? Uh, yeah, the card's bad. <laughs> Look, let me be clear. Vince Vince is a good player. Vince right. is an interesting player. He's a great person. This card is bad. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and he made a bad decision by taking this card. Yeah, so I mean, I think this deck, like, you know what? I'm going to tell you straight up here. Like, if I am in Vince's spot, yeah, I don't go for the double mox. You know what I do? What do you do there? I go mox Narset. Take a lane off her game. No way. Yes, 100%. That eighth, would be sweet. Eighth pick. Should uh-huh. go Mox Narset or whatever is available that's top that you want, plus Narset Mana Crypt Narset Mana Crypt went earlier this time, so that'd be out right. But Soul Ring Narset, whatever combo you want, take a lane off of Narset immediately, and then when it comes back around, you take the Fairy Time Raveler and you go into kind of blue white prison uh-huh. control. Wow. Yeah. So you probably go like Mox, uh, whatever the whatever, white Mox. Yeah. You go Mox Pearl <laughs> Narset. <laughs> yeah. My- White Mox is so bad that I didn't even remember what it was called. Exactly. That, that's so, the level yeah. of... Yeah. yeah, exactly. But um, but no, that's interesting. Like, she was literally cosplayed as an arsenal. It would have been the biggest dagger ever. It would have been the biggest dagger, but it also is going to change the draft fundamentally. Like, Elaine has been able to slow... To, she's taken a second two each time. Yep. 
it's been so instrumental to her decks, mm -hmm. but no one's challenged her for it, right? And That's like true. that eight spot is the best spot to challenge it. I thought Brandon was going to take it too over Strip Mine when he took the Mox Sapphire. Yeah, I didn't think. I thought he was trying something different and not going to go over to lands. I was like, right here, Brandon should take Narset, make a state because Brandon likes the wheel deck, right? Brandon yeah. likes Wheel of Fortune. He likes Time Twister. He likes Levold, right? He's ran Levold before when she took Narset. That would be pretty sweet. So like, there were two points right there where I was like, the answer at this point is take Narset before Elaine gets it. That would be truly incredible. I would love, I would love to see somebody force Elaine into a deck that wasn't blue, right? Like that would be really interesting to see. I mean, I think Elaine doesn't actually shy away from blue, but oh, I yeah, think she just stays. In she'll stay in it, but I think that it just takes away that piece, right? Yeah. That very strong piece, and, and it's and it's going to just like I don't know if you can tilt her very much, but it's going to tilt her. Yeah, I mean, Tinker is also incredible. Tinker was especially <laughs> insane because of the Tinker into Aether Searcher pick here. Um, that's actually a really interesting question here. Is uh, I know we're, we're bouncing that back off yeah. of the deck list again, but Aether Searcher... Uh, oh, I don't have much more to say about this deck, to be honest. We can bounce. <laughs> <That's pretty simple. laughs> it, it, was, it had some interesting stuff in it, but if you're going to go Storm, you got to go Storm. Right. That's been what we've seen every single time. Right, right. All right, Aether Searcher. This card, I anticipated uh, that... I anticipated that we'd actually end up Arcane seeing Arcane Servant. Savant as the card right. that blew up and it's like it's a one card combo right it's insane that has to be the best card Aether Searcher grabbing Emrakul allows you to cast the Emrakul and effectively is a one card combo as well right. and Aether Searcher I think the big thing that makes Aether Searcher very interesting is that Aether Searcher gets from your hand or library so you don't have to um, you don't have the dead card in your hand right sure. so you draw Emrakul it's not dead yep you you get to play it cast it from either and that's really potent you know it's tinkerable um, what else did, did uh, so let's go ahead and go with John Ryan because we're here, right? Yeah. Like, uh, so I mean, he, he had the option attackable. of going. He had the option of going with, uh, with the Arcane Savant and kind of having a control deck, and mm -hmm. opted instead to go for a broken sneak attack deck and take Amicool right. as the other piece. Yeah, and then uh, he's got the nice Teferi to kind of protect it. Yep. Uh, you know, and and he's a, he, the thing about John Ryan's deck is like early on I wasn't quite sure, but he backdoored into a pretty nice little control deck here as right. well, right? Like. He doesn't have all the counter spells, but he's got the removal, he's got the draw, he's got this, you know, chain of vapor, through the breach, drawn from dreams, you know, ready to draw cards and buy pieces back. Like he ends up with this pretty solid, not a counter based control, but still just like a pretty solid control deck. Yeah. I like um that. that's going to get him his pieces. And he's got three ways to get either Emrakul or Aether Searcher into play. He's yeah. got sneak attack, he's got show and tell. And he's got um, Tinker into, into Searcher. So he's I, not I waiting for the splash, second drop. The White Splash was literally just for the Swords and the Teferi. Yeah. That was interesting. I don't know. I feel like this... His mana seemed fine. Yeah. If instead you take counter spells in those spots and you end up going for uh, and you end up going for something like Elliot Wu's deck from the old Northwest Vintage drafts, mm -hmm. I feel like you end up in a pretty similar spot. Um I don't know which one's better or not, but it was kind of interesting yeah. that he ended up trying to go well, with the white. I think what I like about the Tinker version of this right here is that you, you get both, right? Like, I think most yeah. Tinker decks aren't, you know, Sneak Attack doesn't do that much for, but, like, either way, you, you get, you know, it, whichever one you draw, obviously if you draw Tinker, you can't just go, you draw Tinker, you're fine, um, unless you happen to have um, Search in your hand, hand yeah. right? That's the only bad, bad, bad run, is if you have Tinker in hand and Searcher in hand. Correct. Everything else, you're perfectly fine with whatever way they go, pretty yeah. much. Uh, to Hyphenate's comment there about um, Tinker and... Uh, oh, he took Balance as well. Good call out. Yeah, Balance is incredible. He didn't right. get a play. He, he boarded it in. He used it as a Wrath. Right. Um, you know, I think the Tinker and Narset question is really about what you want to do, right? Like, if, you know... I don't necessarily think that Tinker is... You know, Nar Tinker before Narset is always right. I think if you're open, if you have an open idea and you're willing to take whatever's best available, Tinker before Narset's always right. If you have a distinct plan of the deck you want to play, then I think, you know, go with that distinct deck you want to play. Mm -hmm. And and that is, you know, not be, you know, going for those big artifact things and just trying to finish off the game in the one spell swing. So, I, I mean, I can see both. I, I think, but I do think in a vacuum you're absolutely right. Yeah, I, especially if Aether Searcher stays in the third round. Right. I don't even, I don't know if that's true anymore. Right. Yeah. I, 
I predicted that uh, I predicted that we'd end up seeing the Arcane Savant in the first round. Right, and I said round three or four. Or yeah, you, you ended five. up being right this time. Okay. I still think Arcane Savant and Tinker might be better than Moxon. Tinker is weird, right? Because Tinker, you end up requiring to have an artifact, so mm-hmm. that's you need the Moxon to act. Yeah, and he, had the, he, he, did, he, he was smart. He got the Great Furnace. He got to see. I think a lot yeah. of people forget those for the artifact play. He got the DAC to steal someone's artifact to Tinker. That's the sexy, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty good. But and no, he can turn one kill. I mean, he's got, right. he's got the mana crit, right? <laughs> like, island mana crit, uh, Tinker. So, okay, next time around, let's say somebody takes Tinker in the two slot. Do you think Aether Searcher goes before it makes it back to the Tinker player? Oh, man, do you hate pick a seven drop? Right? It's huge. It's huge, but you're hate picking a seven drop, right? <laughs> like, okay, if I'm going to go for an artifact deck with Mr. Workshop, yeah. yes, I do it. I don't think I can fundamentally, and maybe it's me, right? Like, I don't think I can fundamentally hate pick a seven drop that I may never cast just to stop a deck. Right? I would rather just pack more counter spells and just take mana drain that spot and just be, you know, force a will and just be like, oh, cool, I'm just going to counter your, your tinker. That's reasonable. Right. I, I mean, been, even I, mind sensor. If right? people are letting you get away with that play of dacking a Gilded Lotus and tapping it for blue, they, they don't understand how tapping works. <laughs> that, that, that shouldn't ever happen. Right. Uh. <laughs> but no, I, I, I think that's reasonable. Right. I so mean, maybe at that point, like... Did even mind sensor get picked? Was even mind sensor did not get Was that in Shelly's deck? Oh, that should have been in Shelly's deck. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, something that deck. That makes more sense. <laughs> I guess, yeah, if you have a, if you have a Tezzeret in play. Um, let's see if let me make sure. Oh no, my oh, did. Okay. did. It just didn't get played. Main just deck. didn't get played. Main deck. Okay. Um. So yeah, no, I, I still like allowing Tinker, Aether Searcher, Emrakul all in the same deck feels wrong to me. Maybe it's just like at that point you're locked in. I mean, are you willing to over to override your deck that much to hate somebody in that early round? Right. It depends on whether you, if you force yourself into the sneak attack show and tell deck at the, after that point. Now I do think Kyle could have taken Emrakul. Right. Sure. In that dark depth spot, so we're we're on the no, so he's on the ether searcher. No, he can't because it's going. We're going back over, so you Kyle can't take it. It doesn't. It does. Kyle doesn't have a chance to take it before uh, John Ryan takes it. Vince could have taken it and gone into a shallow grave deck. Sure. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Like yeah, yeah. that. He was in the reanimator slot. He already right. had Crystal Brand coming down the pike. Yeah. I don't know. It's interesting. Um. Yeah, no. I, well, I, and I mean, Brandon has taken Emrakul before, right? Like, with the Fast Bond deck. He did channel. If somebody uh, had sniped the Emrakul, then he would have taken Arcane Savant, right? That's that's very right. clear. Well, it, but if you take the Searcher... Correct. That's the part that I think is... The search, he'll search for the Savant, because the Savant goes after. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. So so I think that, like, if somebody takes Tinker, the choice is whether you take Aether Searcher. Because if you do, then at that point you force them into like a memory jar deck or something. I don't know. I mean, or is a there steel. A, what other thing could you search for that's going to win on the spot other than Emrakul? Uh, Emrakul or Arcane Savant. Okay. So or if you want to get really deep, you can go. Uh, what's that green card that they had an EDH? Bio rhythm. Bio rhythm. You could bio. But that requires somewhere. certain things. That requires them not having. It requires them having no creature. Right. Which is at you know depending on where is pretty pretty decently likely uh, in sure. this format. That's true. Yeah, creatures have actually had a big step up yeah. recently. So. Yeah. Fire Rhythm's real good. Right. Yeah, get that Black Border. Yeah. Well, Black Border, and also, like, it looks way darker and cooler here compared to there. Yeah, yeah, the White Border like, now, it is, like, the art's just like, hey. Yeah, this one's The art is literally serious. <laughs> wow, in the, in, in the ninth edition one, they literally just, like, lightened up the art. Right, that's really weird. It's not as cool. No. Um... Drawing your entire deck can easily lead to a reliable instant kill. Yeah, yeah that yeah, seems yeah. fair. Seems fair. Mm-hmm. All right, so I, I don't know what's going to happen next time, but I predict that Arcane Savant and Aether Searcher are going to move around for a little bit until we figure it out. Yeah, that makes sense. So, okay, let's see. Uh, we talked about Vince. We talked so, about So, well, question Ryan. then before we move yeah. on. I mean, so we, we've been to this before, right? Like, I, 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 now I know my opinion and... Uh, but is this something that, you know, it's been asked? Are these the things that we have to watch for? Have these two cards of this kind of, the, have they disrupted the balance of the force? So, I, we asked this, we had a survey question that we asked all the players that were playing, which right. is, if you could ban a card in VRD, which card would you ban? Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think there was, there were two people that made joking responses, and mm-hmm. six people that Same. said, 
if I could ban a card in VRD, I would, would not be. ban a card because it wouldn't be VRD yeah. anymore. Yeah. Which is my agreement. Right? Yeah. <laughs> like that's I think that's exactly right. And I I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what ends up happening. I know most people don't play with these draft matters cards, even though they're vintage legal. But I, I think that that's just like a fundamental question of what how the format responds, right? In, right. in vintage, you sometimes see a two month period where people are playing one tournament a week before you end up seeing a response to a new strategy. Right. I think that like since this is the second draft with draft matters cards, people remembering they exist. I think that it's, I think that we should give it some time. Yeah, I agree. I also think though that, that the presence of these and allowing these also does put that, push that power of control that much higher because like these are not cards you can re reactive against. You can't just have the removal deck, you know, though removal can't stop more cancer bomb. Yeah. Right. But you can't just have the removal deck mostly to answer these cards, counter spells and discard. Yes. Do a much better job, right? So I think these place a even slightly higher premium to those type of decks. That's true. Yeah, it, it really does push counter spells even higher than they would have been already. Right. Um, I want to see a Charbelter deck happen. I've been trying to brew it, and I can't make it happen. But I feel like I feel like it's there. You can't make fetch happen, though. I know. That's true. I try. <laughs> you try. Shadow of the Doubt is constantly in effect. Yeah, Shadow of the Doubt was uh, drafted uh, really way too early. Uh, was it really? Oh, God. Uh, 11th pick by a length. That has to be a troll. It was main deck. Yeah. I mean, it's fine. It's a good card. I think it's draftable. I think it's playable. It draws your card. Um, Elaine you know. really bailed this time where she took Dreadbore as her 15th pick. Like, she wasn't even trying to get in the booth this time. No. She I did. Think. She still got in the booth first, though. I know. It's, I feel like chat fell through on that one. You can't let her get away with making a, a, a boring pick there. You gotta, like, I don't know. Who, who had an interesting 15th pick? Burgeoning. Burgeoning should have gotten in the booth. No. That card's great. The card's horrible. It's bad in this format, but it's a good card. It's bad in EDH, unless it's in your opening hand. That's true. That's true. Uh, all right, well, I mean, so let's talk, bounce over to Shelly here. Okay. Yeah, Shelly, uh, for his first time through, he tried something, and he, he went into this uh, this white deck and wanted to try doing hate bears. Mm-hmm. Um, didn't end up having a ton of success with it. I think it was due to his lack of familiarity with playing the format more than it was with his drafting. Right. He did do the same thing that happens all the time. Whenever you're inexperienced in this format, you end up taking way too many main deck cards. cards. Right? Like, uh, he's, play, he's not playing cards like Null Rod, right? Right. He's not playing cards like Even Mind Sensor. These cards are just ludicrously good main deck cards that he didn't play. Right. And he has no sideboard. He has a lot of cards that take your deck from a 6 to a 7. And that's just like... Your sideboard card should go from a, a four to a ten. So, yeah, I think uh, I really like Deafening Silence, uh, but yeah. uh, I mean, other than that, I mean, I think one of the issues here is that he's got a lot of like little answers to everything, right? Like, right. there's some really interesting cuts. Like, oh, good, you're pulling up Samurai, right? Like this card, um, this card's actually probably my least favorite pick of his. I loved it because it reminded me that the card existed. Yeah, the card's sweet. Right, but here's why it's my least favorite pick in this format. He doesn't have the removal, right? Sure. So where is he sending cart permanents to the graveyard, right? Yeah. He's it is if a permanent would be put into a graveyard. He's not doing. No one else has a heavy creature deck where it's going to happen in combat math, right? Like that right. that card wins white weenie battles because it gets the bushido bigger, and then you know kind of that sort of stuff. But he, there's no removal for it, right? So that's kind of in play. It's like his deck's doing a lot of these different things. And he plays in on this kind of idea of, like, well, I'm going to be very flexible. So he gets that, like, living wish. So he's like, oh, cool, I've got all these other creatures on my board I can wish for. Sure. Um, you know, like, I love the Karakas pick. Uh, that, that's definitely up there. Picks I love. I love Kataki. I love... Um, Suppression Field is my favorite of his. This card... I love Suppression Field. Underdrafted. I, uh, you know, I in an old extended... Uh, Eric and I talked about this. I used to turn one Suppression Field quite nice. often um, to shut down Fetches. And Suppression Field also, like, this This one just went in the PDX one as well. Um, we were just talking about that in our Discord, which is linked from our website, stlotus.org. So uh, go ahead and check that out. But I need to do that. The, uh, the, in the Discord, we were talking about that, about how this card doesn't get drafted a ton, but has obviously seen a lot of play in modern and other formats back right. in the day. Um, yeah, so he's got a lot of some really interesting ones here. But yeah, I just don't think... Um, like, Hushwing Griff is probably sideboard of Remain, because there's just not as many decks that are going to have comes into play creatures doing their, their due diligence, right? Yep. Um, I do love Kotaki. Manglehorn's great. Manglehorn's great. I love Containment Priest. Obviously, Containment Priest has been drafted quite well. Skullclaw's um, probably the best pick, right? Like, that card is taken at the right slot. It's like, 
at the point where somebody else might start thinking about taking it. Yeah. Like, elves definitely would have wanted it before that. Um, right. uh, and, and it's just, like, a powerful card. I don't know if the Wasteland's right in this deck. No, not without any recursion on it. Right. And then the Thorn of Amethyst is, like, no one's taking Thorn of Amethyst. I mean, I love that card, uh, but... I don't know. When playing, I heard him express a lot of frustration at his sequencing, that he just wasn't familiar enough with the format to know how to sequence his bears. Makes sense. Yeah. When every card in your deck costs two, it's really hard to decide which one to play. Right, right. Um, how interesting is it that he played once, once upon a time? Right? Once upon a time was... He had a very low green splash. Right. Um, so I mean... I, I When we reviewed it, I said, like, in a 40-card deck, you know, chances in your open hand seem pretty decent, you know? Sure. Um, so there it's free, and outside of that, I mean, I don't know, and he did main deck it, so... He had a Mox Emerald, he had an Emerald. Prismatic Vista, right. and then, like, he, the, three or four Vista, forms. the best fetch in the format. <laughs> I suppose that's probably indisputably true now. Yeah. Well, you just don't have enough edge. Like, you, you, it guarantees you to get you whatever color you want. Correct. You don't have to worry about anything else. You're guaranteed the land you need. You dropped away OUT and great. Oh, okay, that's good to know. Oh, yeah, and Milbog, it was an MVP. That's great. Um, I, I feel like Shelly had a lot to learn. Mm -hmm. um, and Shelly also said uh, he had been out of Magic for quite a little bit. He had not sure. drafted since original, or played since original Theros. Uh, he's played since then, but yeah, he hasn't, he hasn't done it. It's been draft. a while, I know he said. Right. right. And Rotisserie is a hard format to step back into. Yeah. Let's jump over to Dan. Uh, he, uh, a former winner. Uh, mm -hmm. He obviously is incredibly deep on this format and knows what he's doing. He opted to go for a similar deck to Elliot Wu's deck, the similar one to the his, uh, similar one he's been playing before, right? You know that he's been playing some kind of blue deck, whether it's Infect or not, but he opted for Splinter Twin this time. Up until cool. pick 14. Yes. So even a little later, maybe. I was convinced he was still just going to go Infect. Up until <laughs> about pick 14. Yeah. I was convinced. He could have. Because he said he wasn't going to, but I thought he was just mind-screwing us. I, could, I was convinced he was just going to go Infect. Um... Then the Soulfire Grandmaster sealed the deal that he, he wasn't, right? right? Didn't end up playing the Soulfire Grandmaster. It does have the potential to go infinite with Time Walk. He needs um, six mana, though. It's it, so yeah, I, I don't think. I don't like it. It just has the potential. I, you know, it pains me a little bit that he dropped the Vampiric Tutor and ended up not going that route. Yeah. Right? Um, but, like, it, wasting your fifth pick sucks, but staying in a color that two other players are yeah, in no, that doesn't have depth for you? I think it's different between a winner and me. Right. <laughs> like, you know, Reasonable. Uh, right. Um, you know, uh, this deck Actually, there were four black players. Sorry. Right. This deck features my main critique of Time Walk is that... Uh, well, actually, no. I thought this deck... I will stand corrected. I thought this deck featured my main critique of Time Walk, which is a lot of times in the control deck it ends up just being a rampant growth. Correct. Right? It did not because, uh, because of the combo nature of mm -hmm. his ultimate win, I watched several times where it was play the one piece... Time walk, play the other piece. Interesting. Right? So it, it came like because of the ability for like to drop Imperial Cruder, yep, and then play time walk, and then Kiki out the next turn. Right? Like I thought when he first drafted this, I was like, this deck is going to be another time walk is a bad rampant growth deck. Sure. Um, but because of the combo nature, I watched at least two games. Where he that that was not the case, right? Like it was time walk, and then I just win. That's completely fair. I, I do think it's interesting that he took Shellback Isle last pick. That's a card that we've seen end up in the first pack yeah. before. It's I mean yeah, and his deck so good. It's, it's obviously thing. very good. Yeah, I don't know. His deck was my favorite one at the table. I that understand I that it, it obviously like, didn't perform super well. Um, he did fine. I mean, right? Yeah, he performed fine. I mean, he had a couple rough matches. I mean, there was just a couple other really good decks, right? That Correct. that had equal kind of answers. I mean, I think one of the things is, out. so he has the really good early counter spells, like four spell leak and mana leak, mm -hmm. but then he kind of relies on these couple big, like four drop and five drop counter spells. Right? I mean, that, that could have slowed him a bit. No, I think this is a really good deck. Uh, he did end up taking fourth as well. He ended up beating Kyle out in, yeah. the, in the best of one. Um, so yeah, I mean, he performed in the top half. He had really respectable finish. Yeah. Mystic Confluence uh, and Cryptic Command, both there, like, he just had all the best cards. Right. They're so powerful. You know, and, and again, they highlight that this is not a, you know, that these are going to be relevant. This is, You don't have to have everything to win by turn three. Right. right. Like, Confluence is just ridiculous. The card's just insane. Yeah, it's not like you're playing Pioneer where every game's over in turn three. Exactly. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but no, I, Dan Zek, great. 
Right. Um, I mean, and you, you, you take the jet, and that's why you take the vampiric, and then you realize you're not going to go that route, right? Like, he's obviously set up for blue-black, and then he's like, you know what? Nope. I'm going to audible. I'm going to do this, right? Maybe he was thinking Esper, or maybe he was thinking, like, Drixus. Maybe he was already in mind for Splinter Twin or thinking Drixus at that point. I don't know. Do you know, what what was the reasoning behind that? Was he, he obviously, up until, let's see, up until pick 12, he was not in anything except for blue, I don't and know. then black. He was I, flushing we, we, black. I don't know. We never actually had heard? No. Because I could see it being, oh, Vince took Gristlebrand, I dropping out of Reanimator. Right. He's in a Reanimator deck up until that point. Yeah. Like, I could see that being a control Reanimator shell. Right. Or, or, you know, I mean, he didn't go for the Thought Seeds early enough that he, I don't think he was going to go for that kind of shell, right? And then the muddle mixtures, that little bit of variable. So, yeah, I don't know. Maybe he's, maybe he had a plan the whole time. Maybe he's just keeping it open. Muddle the mixture is incredibly good with Animate Dead. Yeah. That's true. I don't know. This feels like a Reanimator deck that got scared off by Vince sitting next to him. Yeah. That makes sense. If it did, it worked out, right? That's a good play. I mean, right. if you're gonna if you're audible and at that point and you end up with that, that means you've got a solid plan, right? And that's that's the type of thing that you know divides I'm gonna go John Baden here. That's how we divide the champions from the scrubs. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Well, you did end up driving here for a right. long way tonight, so uh I divided the champions from the scrubs while driving here? No, no. no. <laughs> Madden famously doesn't fly. Oh, okay. So yeah, he, only, he he takes the train from Dallas to New York. Oh, there so, we go. Yeah. Um all right. Elaine. All right. Elaine played Narset. Shocking. Yeah, shocking. Uh, again, I already stated my piece about I think someone th- should have thrown Elaine off Narset. Um, so Elaine is, you know, when I'm calling this draft, it's Eric and I, and we're sitting there, we're like, okay, start to pick Elaine, start to pick Elaine, boom, thought sees, right? Like, yep. Okay. She's done Grixis before. Not surprising. I think she overpicks the Dark Confidant. I think that's too high. Um, I agree this time. I mean, right. As someone who has taken Dark Confidant fifth pick before, uh, I think that creatures have proven to be less useful than we thought they would, mm-hmm. and curves have proven to be higher than we thought they were at that time. Right. So early on, um, prior to Warless Barker, prior to the, like, the Planeswalker Revolution, I feel like cheap creatures and a deck that had no cards that cost more than three was incredibly viable and really good. I don't think that is true anymore. So the story of Elaine's deck, in my mind, yep. 100%, it r- highlighted the power of discard. Yeah. Right? Like, this reaffirmed to me that the Dead Guy Ale deck is legit. I think it's great. Right? Because, like, watching it, so, she, I mean, she had, like, her counterspells were fine, but let's let's counter counterspells, right? This is not a normal Elaine deck of counterspells. Correct, yeah. So, so she's got Force. Mystical Dispute. Mystical Dispute. Snap. You can buy one back, but she often snap back discard, I saw. Yeah. Um... And <laughs> I guess the Gust. Moss Will for counting Snapcaster. Right. Aether Gust is kind of. And she mained it. Miscalc 6. Yeah. But I mean, some of those aren't even counter spells. Right? Counter Squall is counter squall. 7. And she mained, right? So yeah, there's 5. Right. There's right. Five so I mean, there's really counter spell d- divest. Is that kind of, No, that's, no that's, that's, that's the new discard. Uh, that's discard. Yeah. So there's really not counting Snap, right? There's counter squall, um, Miscalc, Force of Will. Aether, Sir, Aether Gust. Aether Gust. And Mystical Dispute. Part-time and Mystical, and Mystical Dispute. Yep, five. Right. So, five. Aether Gust. Oh, red. What? Red. Right. Well, Aether Gust and Reb though, are definitely main deckable. Also only hit. Like, I'm not going to count them as full encounters. I mean, there were a lot of blue decks this time. So, Reb. Okay, Reb over Aether Gust. Because, I mean, what? I, actually, I question Aether Gust main. Like, so, Re- Aether Gust is blue or green and red. Right? Yes. Yeah, so, what right. is she main decking? You know, so she gets to hit... Kiki. So I think that's a response to, okay, Elaine being smart, I'll give her credit on this. I don't like <laughs> it necessarily, but I think what she sees is I have to be able to stop a Kiki, yep. right? I have to be able to stop a sneak attack, right? And and Or, or you know, maybe over here, whatever Kyle's going to try to do. So I think she's looking at the competition and sees the main deck, either Gus is a nod to that. Um, I feel like if you can play that card and it will have an answer in six out of seven decks, you're doing fine. Yeah, the card, I mean, the card's really good. I just don't know if it was truly main deckable. I feel like 24 picks and main decking it win in six out of seven matches, it's right. an all-star, is good. Okay. Um, I think that if, if there are five blue players at the table, I think you can play, um, you can play Tsunami, is that the card I'm thinking? No, you can play right. Boil. Right. Well, she deck. also main deck Deathmark, which is interesting. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's great. Yeah, but it's only green and white. I mean, like, again, like, what are we... Look at the green at the table, right? There's a ton of green. Sure, okay, so we've got green creatures with Kyle. Yep. 
Uh, Naveen is obviously not in green. Right. What else do we have green creatures? Uh, uh, Shelly, for sure. Yeah, what green creatures does he have? Oh, green and white. Oh, white. Okay, so yeah. he's got the white creatures, right. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Brandon is has Corsair and all of his green he's nonsense. Got, he's got a couple green. He's got Corsair. Yep. Um, Corsair's the only creature he hates. Uh, elks, I guess. <laughs> so sad. You have to hate your own elk. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Okay, fine. So, yeah, no, you're right. Okay. That, that one's odd main deck. Right. But, but okay. So, but ultimately, like, like game after game, what I saw with her. So, let's, so we counted the, uh, the oh, counter spells. I, I haven't just pointed out, Elaine's entire column is bold. Oh, okay. Well, that's part of the problem. All right. Well, probably not main deck. Right. Good call. Okay. Okay, cool. Well, let's check the, the so we just, we, so the, I don't even know if all those count for main deck then, right? But let's check the uh, discards. So, we've got Thoughtseize, right? So, let's start the top. So, we've got Thoughtseize. We've got duress. We've got oh god, what, that energy flux was way overpaid. No, um, energy flux is perfect. You think it was perfect? Okay. I I, I, feel I like love the card. sideboard cards and early blue on. sideboard cards mm-hmm. early on. Right, was, I feel like red or uh, blue elemental blast could go pretty early if there's a lot of red. Players. Thought erasure, yeah. Davril, him, divest. Yep. Drown in the lock can be counter. Oh, we missed drown in the lock. That can be counter uh, and removal. And she ran that main deck for sure. Um, and that's it. So we've got six discard. Right? As I said, the majority of games I watched her, she was not snapping counter spells. She was snapping discard. She was devouring people's hands. Um, yeah. Ingress Rampage was pretty exceptional for her. And then she ran as her win cons, Kess and uh, yeah. Nicol Polos. Yeah, she cast, um, you know, Dovin. Still, people are, are sleeping on that card and yep. letting her have it. Uh, when she shouldn't, uh, she I know she regretted not bringing in force against John Ryan in the playoff. Oh wow! Yeah, um, because that's something that can stop. You know, and you mean right? force of despair? Force of despair. Force. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, the, the card that she ended up saying that was not great was Pack Rat. It's kind of interesting. And she said she said she only went off of that once. I right. saw her go off of that three times. Okay. but like either way, she didn't feel right. like it was impactful. Yeah. So I mean, I really think that. I think the difference between Elaine's Grixis deck, uh, third place Grixis deck, and BRD two, yep. and this Grixis deck, um, honestly, like though, I think there was one card that she probably should that she took in two that she probably took in this one, and that's Nick Flip Nickel Bowls. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I think the difference was the amount of discard she had. I think sure. that, that really made this deck so much better than that other deck, right? I think um, it's fair. Hy- Hyphen also thinks that energy flux was picked too high. Um, I defer to you two at that point, right? Like, it seems very good to me, uh, especially with the number of blue players and the number of artifacts that run around, but... Yeah, I mean, I can see it. she wrecked face with it, for sure. So, yeah. when I saw it, I just don't know... Uh, I don't know if she had it main, first of all, because uh, everything's saying. And then, you know, I just wonder if it was anyone else going to be grabbing onto it. Fair point. At, at that point. And Pack Rat, yeah, I agree it's in the top eight of black... Uh, I don't know, top eight's real high. Uh, it's certainly an incredibly good black card. I, I do think amazing you reanimator strategies because you get a pitch with it. There we go. That's that's exactly what I was going to say. It's, I just don't know if it's great in her deck. Correct. I think it's a fine win condition, but like her deck doesn't have a ton of draw. In VRD two, did she end up with Insectral, or did she end up with something else? Let's jump over there. VRD two. I feel like she got stuck in the middle slot again. She was. No, she had Mox Ruby into, into Bob. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, and obviously having Ancestral is very key to you know building this deck. Uh, yeah. And you know, Snap Ancestral seems really really potent. So. All right. Let's jump back over to five. Okay, so Naveen. Naveen came back, drove down from Chicago to St. Louis. Yeah. Really appreciate that. Or flew. No, he, he took the train. He took the train right. down here. Yeah, it's um, a cheap train. Yeah, yeah, true. It's actually a really nice ride. Yeah, it is. Um, so he ended up in the Time Vault deck. Yeah. Time Vault going to slot two ahead of Ancestral Recall. Uh, I've been, despite the numbers showing that Ancestral Recall is better than Black Lotus, I still think Black Lotus leaves you more open. And it, anyway, it, there's a lot of good reasons there. Time Vault beating out Ancestral is very interesting, especially in a world where Tinker, Aether Searcher, and Arcane Savant exist. So Naveen looked at his deck from BRD1 mm-hmm. and tried to do the most to replicate it. So he's comfortable with it. Yeah. Right? And again, I think there's something, there's something to be said about the strength of being open. There's also something to be said about, like, I know what I'm comfortable with, mm-hmm. and I'm going to run with it, right? And, you know, he did. He looked at I think he, uh, for the first several picks, I was like, other than we got the Arcane Savant, so he'd been paying attention, he'd been following, right? Uh, even though he's gone, gone, gone from our mind, you know, locally, not from our heart, but he's been following the BRD. <laughs> yep. um, but yeah, I mean, he he had a, the very similar thing. He had some two card money, and 
He's got, you know, t- time bolt combos, and he's going to do... He had ice run Scepter, this right? Thing, yeah, like, he had Scepter counter spells several times, you know? It was pre- his deck was pretty sweet. I enjoyed it. It was a fun one to watch play as well, because they just, like, you never knew it was going to happen. Yeah. In a deck turning Frantic Search, like, there's just weird stuff I going on. Did, so, yeah, he has a couple picks I didn't love, right? <laughs> I actually didn't love the Frantic Search early Same. on. I didn't love the Karn Scion of Urza, though it seemed to do some work for him. He had a couple games where he just ended up with, like, a several big... It, well, he had that and Urza out and ended up with like several big tokens and was just kind of stomping down. Yeah. Um, I, I don't, I think he could have got that 45, right? I like, agree with you. No one's taken it. Has anyone, t- uh, we have a bot down, so. D- dramatic reversal is a is an interesting one that I see why he did it, right? It's obviously a power play in EDH where you do ice grunts after dramatic reversal yeah, but and you have a bunch he, of mana and you can win the game from there. Right, but what's he winning with? Right. He Urza? Does, he, he has the Mana Vault. So, like, it is possible for Mana Vault, Grim Monolith, and Mox Opal. Like, he can get there pretty easily. Um, but, but what is he doing with the infinite mana? Oh, I don't know. Urza? Urza. I mean, sure. that's, that's, that's what I'm saying, right? Like, that was my problem with the Dramatic Reversal pick. Because the Dramatic Reversal pick makes sense in a lot of ways. But when your only card that you're doing anything with is Urza? So, the thing I was going to say is, the reason I like... I think Dramatic Reversal is interesting in a world where you're locked into having Ice Ground Scepter, which I think you don't need and you shouldn't right. probably have. But if you do already have it, Dramatic Reversal I think is fine. I guess it does on tap Time Bolt. Exactly. It's a Time Walk, right? right. It's Dramatic Reversal is a Time Walk. And at that point... I mean, okay. at minimum, it untapped Volt for one turn. Yes. Okay. I'll, I'll buy it for that, right? So and maybe that's his other play, is that, oh, I just built myself my own key. Right. <laughs> if you have a Dramatic Reversal plus... Uh, plus right. time vault. Or just even though you, even you don't have to build a key, you just want you're you're on the lose, but you need a turn, right? Like sure. I can just okay, I'll type it once, get another draw, see what I get, right? Yeah. Um, the Mirage Mirror, like there were a lot of in- Mirage Mirror plus Time Vault also allows you to take an extra turn. Right. Um it can go infinite. Here. Correct. Yeah, because you mirage mirror, make it a time vault, tap it, mirage mirror something else, it untaps and but it, it doesn't even have to untap because it's until end of turn, so you just oh, right. God, you don't even have to make a copy of something else. You okay. just it's just a straight it li- I think he said he actually didn't end up liking it. Oh, really? Yeah, I think because I, I think it felt cl- if he didn't have the vault, it felt clunky. So that that's where I think in this slot, you actually just don't take mana vault there, you take dark depths. Right. Oh, no, oh sorry, no. Dark uh, depths went. Kyle Vance was smart enough to avoid the hate pick of dark depths by taking <laughs> Sespi and Save yeah, Dark Depths. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, if, if you weren't sitting next to the wheel there, I think you could take dark depths pretty early. And then at that point, use Mirage Mirror to copy it. Right. And become a Marilage as an Altered Link Con. I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of, like, A-B combos in this format. And then people tend to do A-B, and then they do C-D and right. E-F. And I would love to see a lot of A-B, B-C, C-D, right? You kind of have two and card combos that end up comboing with each other across, and you can kind of crisscross them. Right. Well, I mean, so one thing I've talked about, I think, as one of my alternates for BRD2, and I still think super legit is that I hadn't gone Red Knight all of them to Fairy like I should have, then I would have gotten Lavinia and Knowledge Pool. So Knowledge Pool combos yeah. with Lavinia and Knowledge Pool combos with Teferi. That's strong. Right? And so, and there was a couple other things that I would have gone that route, right? So, I, yeah, I see what you're saying. So not just like A, B, C, D, but A, C, B, C. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Having cards that unlock multiple other cards, I think, is really powerful. So, yeah, so like Teferi, uh, you know... Uh, Time Raveler with Knowledge Pool locks them out of the game. Yep. Uh, and then also to Fairy Ty or uh, Lavinia with Knowledge Pool locks them out of the game, but not you. Right. And Hyphen, I agree with you. I think Karn in that slot is completely reasonable. I think Steven's just saying he could have gotten it, uh, pu- push it pretty far down and instead take it in the 40th pick instead. I don't know if he was actually fighting anybody between picks 26 and 40, but if he needed other cards, it would have been pretty easy Sign to was swap over. Okay. I must have, I just... Yeah, I mean, it's I always been taken. It's just kind of like yeah, never really fought for him. Yeah, I mean, Scion is like... Um, it's hard advantage. Yeah, I I don't know. It's just one of those cards that, like, it saw it was super popular and standard when it hit. Yeah. Right? And it saw a lot of play. And even in the... It was like where... There's not a lot of decks it's seen playing at this point. Like, I think okay. it just kind of immediately kind of fell out of favor as more ridiculous things came along. And maybe since it was colorless, maybe it actually does get hate-picked by you by, like, some white deck or something. Yeah, like, it's possible. I could I mean, see a Hate Bears deck taking it just to, like, have inevitability. Right. Uh, or some other artifact deck. I don't know. I, I, I don't, it's not like I, I think it's the worst pick I've ever seen. I just think yeah. that it's super floatable. I also don't like that he didn't end up main decking True Name Nemesis. But you know. <laughs> True Name is so good. I know Elaine has been down talking that card forever, and she's just wrong. Right, yeah. Um, okay, so Kyle. Kyle, I think, for a player brand new to this format, 
obviously he's a really strong technical player. His deck ended up being super interesting, but also really boilerplate, right? He yeah. kind of like, all right, I'm going to go Thespian Sage Dark Depths, right. leaned really hard into that strategy at the very beginning, and then pivoted into Elves, right? right? It's not a traditional it's play. It's not even really Elves. I mean, it's just Mana Dorks. I mean, it's not Elves. What, it's, what else does he have? He has Dragon. You're right. You're right. right. All right. It's a ramp deck. It's, okay, so here's a... I loved... Kyle's deck was my favorite deck up until... Well, the only thing I, that, that threw me off early on was, uh, this, I think, the Sylvan went early. Sylvan. Pick seven, right? Like, oh, wow. Yeah. Um, he doesn't have the fetches to make to, to do it. So I think the Sylvan goes a little early here, right? Like, Sylvan's obviously very powerful. Pause for a minute. You're going to be happy to see... We're using this art for next time. We're swapping off of all of the uh, all the Nazi art. Okay, good, so, good, good. Yeah, yeah Anyway. Uh, so I, I think that the thing that goes with Kyle's deck that I think is quite interesting to me is, is that like he had all the makings like when he took go, go, go back to the list real quick sorry. yeah uh, like when he took Gira, uh, Rafelos and then Vale with a hot pick at nine right like super good pick I think it's great there uh, Force I think it's a good pick there establish it but then he took Vale uh, Rafelos and Draga Birds and then Cradle I'm like sweet Yes. We are in. We're. This is going to be very similar to the last ramp deck. It's going to do some abusive things with Crater Hoof, like right? Survival's going survival. the next couple picks. Yeah. So I mean, even if you know the survival, right? Like he's got the prime. So he goes to prime time. Like sweet. Okay, burgeoning. We fall apart. Tracker. And this is where then I kind of had like the payoff. So other than his ramp, what he's really ramping to, like he can buy down. Um, obviously, if he doesn't have uh, Thespian Sage, he can quickly buy down Dark Depths in one way, right? But he ends up with this, um, yeah, I like the Karn combo in here even. What I didn't end up liking was the kind of scape shift dryad. And he won a couple games with it, I saw it. But I think that's where, like, don't take those and have a couple, have this kind of prisony ramp Karn combo win thing that you have going, where you're just going to win with a lot, most games are just going to win with Dark Depths. Yeah. Right? 100% most games are going to win Dark Depths, some games are going to win with Karn, but at the same time, you need you know you need something big that you're going to be able to just ramp into like a, you know an ulamog mm-hmm. something else for that other thing like the scape shift with uh valakut yeah that put, last it kind of fell off the rails right. for me there like he took the dryad way early which i ranked it pretty decently i thought I like, that's kind of cute whatever yeah. good uh, but yeah like running dryad main and prismatic omen and then the scape shift and valakut i it's cute. I like it. Um, I don't love it. Same. Into the North, though, is a good unlock strategy here. That uh, card I, that card just should be in all these decks. I asked him a, I asked him about this pick, because I thought, because you can't draft Snow, right? So it can only get the one card. So I said, <laughs> is Sylvan Scrying just better? And his answer was, I want it to come and play. I, I want our decks to come and play. Oh, sure. Okay. Right. I, I feel, also feel like... You can throw out one of these picks that was sitting on the sideboard, um, like uh, I don't know. Throw out some yeah, you can. He just take did. one snow covered forest. Yeah, I agree. Right. Yeah, that's a really easy play. Um, I lo- I do yeah, have a song sure. of the dryad pick. Yeah, that was a cute one. Yeah. Uh, and I, I don't think he ever actually went channel into Karn. Now that I saw at least uh, channel into Karn into Microsoft. Oh god, because you could do all that in that turn makes two. Me so so so. Alive. Yeah, it, it's yeah. really amazing. Yeah. Um, what would, the really sad play would be turn three channel. Spend twenty, spend thirty life, remove dark depths, right? <laughs> Just remove all the counters manually, <laughs> nice. but you'd be dead. Right. So that's um, but yeah, I mean, so like the burgeoning, which he did end up running, which is the right play, right? The cards fine in your open hand, multiplayer EDH. Yep. Um, you know, I do. Um, I don't really like exploration that much in this one. I, I don't know. I mean, again, it's amazing your opening hand. Oh, exploration works great in like the curry deck where yeah. you're going to be recasting yep. them out of your graveyard. I agree. Right, you, where you're you, going to you double strip mine. Ramming app there, right? And he did. He had the ramming app for it, but he didn't. I mean, so yeah. I mean, but he's just going to be replaying his own lands, I mean. right? You know, if, if you have a lot of fetches, it right. can work. I don't know. I feel like it's okay. It probably isn't great in his deck. Yeah. Um, the interesting thing with this one though is, I feel like, I feel like all of his picks are like very good, and he mm-hmm. didn't have a lot of missed picks. A lot of people end up with too many cards in their main deck and not enough cards in the sideboard yeah. because his deck ended up picking like 10 to 12 lands right he kind of almost th- there was a deck back in ages past i think it was like the um the northwest six or something mm-hmm. where somebody drafted zoo and they had all 40 of their cards in their main deck um 
So they only had five sideboard mm-hmm. cards, right? They ran zero basics. Well, I mean, Karn helps with that, right? Like, because a lot of your, your picks, you're, you know... You're... And that's where I'm going, right? If, if you have if you spent 40 of your picks on cards that are in your main deck or in your wish board, you have, like, two to three sideboard cards. And he had good ones, right? He yeah, had Choke. He had Choke. He had uh, I... uh, Collector Oof. He had, like, lots of very good cards. But his sideboard so hits weren't strong enough. Um, we just Eric. Yeah, you're right. Says this. You're right. I think tsunami's better than choke. But in this format, you don't. I took choke, choke, and I was un, unimpressed with it. Right, like yeah. all the land cards are kind of subpar in this format. Um, just because like there's so many basics, right. and people are not running all blue cards. Right. Um, but yeah, you, you can't spend negative a channel. That's funny. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, uh, only four sideboard cards. I, I feel like having. Basics is a massive boon in this format, right? If you're able right. to just lean into the fact that you can use your basics, that's huge. Um, so uh, I will tell you, uh, in his games, I saw and I lo- I like this pick a lot. Elvish Reclaimer did yeah, work. that card's great. So this card is a Haas, and this card in this deck in particular did work, right? Yeah. Like you sacrifice a land, search a library for any land card. And crop put rotation. it into the battlefield tapped, right? So it's yes. crop rotation on a body that gets bigger. I saw him go aggro with it attacking. I saw, you know, he's able to get up his Bajuku Bog. He had crop rotation too. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so this card definitely was a hoss, right? Yes. I think that card's great. Um, so we've hit all the individual decks. Yeah. Format overall. Let's talk about the rule changes that we went through this time. Do you want to summarize those? Sure. So uh, the big one we made was... That we call them self-referential, but self-tutoring cards. Yep. Right. Um, if you so the big one, the big most possible player, of course, there being Avarax. Yes, Avarax. <laughs> uh, being Squadron Hawk, right? Yes. That if you got you drafted Squadron Hawk, you got four Squadron Hawks. Uh, I expected the rule to do nothing. Yep. And, and the rule did nothing. The rule did literally nothing. Right. I mean, the only one you might play a Squadron Hawk, you're thinning your deck, you're getting an army of little guys. It's a little um, bit Jace. Yeah, I mean, there there's some good things for it. Um. I don't think I would draft it. Um, so, yeah. No one decided to go that route. So, that was the one. Did we have what other rules? Uh, we also had... Uh, we did change something else for this last one. I don't think it ended up being relevant. It didn't. Um, oh, no, no. It was the... Uh, we ended up changing the tournament, the results. For oh, how yes. That ended up being relevant, right? The playoffs worked great. So. Yeah. So, we ended up saying that... Uh, if you are tied on match points, that's all that matters. We don't care about game wins anymore. So last right. time we ended up having a thing where basically the winner was decided, the winner of the whole tournament, despite two players both being tied for the winning matches, it ended up being decided on breakers. And that's just not super exciting. So we wanted yeah. to get more magic going on here. So yeah, we had the one game playoffs and then uh, the, uh, you know, Elaine and John Ryan decided to do the two game playoff. Yeah. And, and they were part of the they're they're, they're pals. They're part of one of the same of a of a testing group together. That they were Correct. Doing, you know, yeah, they both travel a lot. Right, and they're both part of a Discord uh, together. So they have they a, had to plan it off. Uh, you know, I think Elaine got a little salty, but you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> wait, Elaine got upset about something. Yeah, yeah I am yeah. shocked. Yeah. No, XJ Cloud is uh, is our winner. John Ryan's handle, and he's part of uh, a group. And there's there's a whole like web ring. Equivalent, uh, since we're both '90s kids, right? Uh, there's there's a web ring uh, of all of that that group that I'm sure tw- gets linked in from Twitch, but right. yeah, XJ Cloud did it really. I was very impressed for his first time in here. Yeah, no. he blew it out of the water. Yeah, no, absolutely. And as I, and I, what, what Eric and I said during coverage that uh, was that again, like we weren't 100 percent sure with his early, but I think he did the best job of for the first time, very particular, kind of learning on the fly, right? Yeah. Like, he was kind of, it looked like he was just doing this early pitch, like, I'm going to pick big, powerful things. And maybe he had a plan the whole time. But the read we got was that, like, he looked at what other people were picking and goes, oh, I need to pick a full deck with sideboard cards, not just, you know, like, it felt like he figured that out mid-draft, right? When he started getting the lands and, and kind of smart picking those things. Like, yeah. I'm drafting not just, like, here's the big things I want to do, but I'm drafting this full picture. And it... Seeing his first five picks, there's no way he didn't have that plan from the beginning. Okay. Right? Like, just look at that. Mana Crypt, Tinker, Aether Searcher, Emrakul, Sneak Attack. Right. Like, at no point in those first picks did he ever spend more than ten seconds on a pick. Okay. Yeah, that's legit. Like, I, I think he had that deck locked in. Um, I, obviously, it assumes he gets Mana Crypt, Tinker, Aether Searcher. Right. But, like... And in the fourth spot, you're feeling pretty safe on that. Yeah, exactly. 
Yeah. No, it's interesting that our top two were third and fourth slot this time. Right. Um, and then third was uh, third ended up being Naveen in the third second. Yeah. Fourth ended up being Kyle. Dan. No, Dan, Dan actually right. ended up being out. So yeah, in the seven. But no, that's our eighth slot ended up going ended up getting last. Um, so so it's kind of like it's interesting so to see how much the actual the one I, I slot has never won in the St. Louis VRD. Is that true? Go, go look. I'm pretty sure. Wow. I was thinking about this. Thinking is because I was thinking about the argument of is Black Lotus overrated? Yeah. Right. Um, and I can make lots of justifications about how the one slot tends to be the player, at least from this person they've drafted for the first time. But yeah, you're right. The one slot ends up getting screwed every time. Right. Um, you know, I, I, I think there's something to be said that I think there's, I think maybe it's just a thought process, right? I think when you end up in the one spot and eight slot, a lot of times because you have those nice little tag teams, I think a lot of times you end up thinking like, okay, I'm just going to go for these two card bodies. I'm going to go for this kind of guy. And maybe they're just a little less, and I'm not saying they're bad. Like on my deck, I obviously performed very well in that spot, right? Yeah. Like I, I was in threat to win. I was tied for first, right? But um, the, like, I think they end up playing to a very particular style of deck sometimes. Yeah. And I think that sometimes it just, if you just have a dedicated plan and are, you're, you're going through and thinking of each pick and not necessarily like, oh, I'm just going to grab these two and grab these two and grab these two. Mm-hmm. I wonder if they just kind of end up we need the player towards a certain style of play. I could be wrong. I... It's possible. So, the next VRD, right? We're going to be doing VRD 6. Right. Uh, We're going to be doing it... On May 2nd. Boom, 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 boom. At? Uh, at where? Sorry. NAMI. Yeah, yeah. so MTG NAMI is going to be running a tournament in St. Louis. This is going to be a giant, I think 200 person is the cap. They already have like 50 or 60 people locked in. Right. Uh, and they're doing this awesome charity event on May 2nd. We're very excited about that. Yeah, you you hear it? I didn't hear it. I don't know. No, maybe it's dead. Maybe it's dead. Oh, there it is. Yay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, so they're going to be running this charity event on May 2nd that right. we're partnering with. We're going to be the feature area. They're going to have 200 slots for actual players and then have us uh, in the Just seats. It's legacy? It's a legacy tournament, right. yeah. Uh, and Jason's running it. It's going to be a really amazing event. I can't right. wait for it. If I were not... Or not, when are you doing this? I'd be absolutely playing Doomsday right. over on those tables. I would be judging it. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm super excited to see what happens with that. But we're going to be partnering and kind of be the streaming a streaming section of that tournament. Right. So we'll be sitting in the area running one of these events. I think there's going to be some kind of auction system for who gets slots in the next VRD. Yeah, I think we're going to be partnering we've discussed with discussed a possibility of like keeping our kind of top four slots because we have like return invites and yep. then like auctioning off four spots. I love that, it. You know. Uh, so we have, we're not, you know, we're keeping some of our congruency over, yep. but then auctioning off some slots so that you can, buy, you know, basically buy them for charity slots. Sort of thing. It'll be very cool to see kind of legacy randos, like legacy grinders jumping into this and see how they handle a VRD. Yeah. Um, similarly, I think after that, we're going to try to move to that monthly model where we do a rotisserie cube draft mm-hmm. and see if this happens. Now that we have like a dedicated streaming box and it hasn't fallen over once yet. Woohoo! Um, it'll be pretty cool to, to run some more of these events and get some more magic streaming going. Uh, we need to figure out how to get that glare issue fixed, but besides that... Yeah, we've got a few things, but we are, yeah. uh, we're about to go look at one of those issues of what, what we might do for yep. a review. So, all right, folks. Well, um, so what do we got coming up, right? So this is the end of February. Our yep. next stream is in... Our next official, you know, announced, obviously, is going to be the next VRD, which is yep. the first week of May. Um, so... March, um, we probably will come up with something, but uh, maybe it might be a theory craft stream because yeah, we don't have what new cards. Are we playing yeah. Alexander so a theory Clementon? craft stream, uh, Alexander <laughs> Clementon. Yeah, there's a million things you haven't done. Uh, you know, the real question is why does he write like he's run out of brine? Oh, God. Um, but anyway, so uh, we'll maybe do a theory craft stream there because there's not really a set to do a review of. Correct. Um, but then we will have a um, set preview probably the week before because um, the pre release is like the weekend of the 17th. Mm-hmm. Um, I know I'm out of town for Nats for speech during yes. the 17th with that pre release. Um, but like right around there, we'll have the full preview. And yep. the other thing, of course, to think about, folks, and this is a bit really going to be really interesting because I think very similar to the last June draft in timing in some way, mm-hmm. is that with Kiora or whatever uh, whatever the set's called, we're going to get five commander decks. That'll be interesting. I think, right? So 
Um, the last commander decks have not made a splash. I, I don't think I, we had a couple. We had Chainer drafted. We had Alila. Correct drafted, and we've had Alila drafted. So we've had no Alila was um, brawl decks. But. Oh sure. Sorry. So we we had two um, commander cards. Both Chainer and Karik for Reanimator. And I think they both have potential. I don't think they were, hor- were horrible picks. No. Um, but uh, there's still a card that I say the best of the last Commander decks was Dockside Extortionist. It still has not been picked. True. Um, you know, but like in some of these, you know, free three or four mana. Um, I don't know. You're really hot on these red cards that don't do anything and never win. So, like, I don't know how good it's going to be, but we'll see. I, 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 I'm not saying you drafted early, but like in the sideboard, like you're going to bring that in, and they're going to, you know, Jeff Blyden's going to drop five artifacts in Mystic Forge, and then you're going to drop that and then ramp up immediately to lock, cash your card and lock them out. Yeah, that that is a wonderful world, and I love. I would have holidays. I would have. I would have yeah. picked that windmill slam in your <laughs> Fair enough. That's fair. In my deck, hundred um, percent. That's fine. I'm, I'm wrong sometimes. <laughs> this time I don't think I am. I think the cards are uh, potentially very good. Yeah, so when, um, you, when are you going to be getting back in that seat so we can start making fun of your picks? That's, That's the wrong question. Uh, you know, I, I finished second and then finished somewhere else. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, we've moved me over into this realm. Uh, you know, I have. I am institutional memory, man. That's I, true. I, I know quite well what's you know, sometimes. The but, encyclopedia uh, of VRD. But there's also the, you know, there's some things that might be happening coming up, and if those things do happen, I may have to move into the seat for, uh, you know, something, something, something. That's but true. anyway, uh, so there are several commander decks, which could mean absolutely nothing, uh, but also means that there will be a whole lot of cards to discuss. So Correct. we may have to do um, a kind of an extra big... Um, uh, you know, heave ho at it. So I do think from the last commander deck that there may there may be a couple other cards that I'm not thinking about that you know might be potentially someday relevant. But overall, I, I don't think it was very strong. Yeah. Uh, and Dockside's obviously not. I I don't even think it's great. But I think it was probably the most playable out of those. That's reasonable. Though Karik in the black deck might be up there. Yeah, I have no idea how to spell Karik. I think there's an apostrophe in there like somewhere. Apostrophe two Ks nine Ks. These aren't real words. Yeah. Not KK. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Kirk makes your black mana... Uh, uh, you can pay black mana with... Um, uh, Phyrexian mana. So. Yep. Son of Yogg. There we go. There we go. That's not a real name. Right. That's nobody. Uh, but you can... like The thing with Kirk that you gotta realize is that uh, you can go turn one soul ring, turn two land, and play him turn two. Yes. Right? So it, it, it seems like, wow, that's a lot of mana. But when you pay six life, you can turn to him pretty quick, you know. And uh, and then you have a two two life link. Oh uh, no! Then you just start casting, paying your life to play black spells, and he gets a lot bigger, a lot quicker. Sure. So, uh, there's actually a really sort of really sick uh, commander deck with it. Right? Like Cody Owen has this, like it was budget and it was stomping some of, of our best lists. You know, just that sounds um, pretty sweet. Yeah. But with that, I think we're we're probably now that we're wandering into budget commander discussion. I think we're probably See, done. He's cut. He's chilling. It's killing my vibe, man. All right, folks. (laughs) Peace out. Thank you, everybody. Thanks.